Hey everyone, I'm Eli Roth, and you just watched The Red Room. I'm here with our director and writer, Justin Harding. Welcome. Thank you. So Justin, we worked together on Haunted Museum, and I'm a big fan of your directing. I thought you did some awesome, scary episodes. Had you heard the story of The Red Room, and what was it about this particular story that got you excited? I have heard uh, of the of Red Rooms. I actually made a film a few years ago called Making Monsters, which was about a Red Room killer. So I always thought it was fascinating that if you're in the business of you know, operating a Red Room, you're, you are kind of a producer. You're dealing with lights, cameras, lenses, editing, or you know, live streaming. Because a Red Room is essentially a live stream on the dark web where you can, viewers interact via Bitcoin to influence what happens. And I just thought, oh man, it's interesting that you know, the people that would be involved in that have to be producers. It's over. Believable, right? <laughs> so you already kind of had a, a fascination with this particular subject. It's a very dark subject, and um, the more research I did, the more I realized it's a great subject for a horror film, because it is a great urban legend. There's so many classic urban legends that we've loved for decades, and then the internet comes along and ruins a lot of urban legends, because you can just figure out. Yeah, Snopes.com just yeah. debunked what was real and what wasn't. The idea that there could be this sort of faceless audience behind a computer screen dismantling you, destroying you and your life, you know, it's, it's a great metaphor for, you know, what can happen when we have uh, access to the internet and can do what we want and can access anything we desire. It shines a light on the darkest, you know, aspects of human nature. <laughs> yeah, I was always fascinated by what people will do when they know they're not going to get caught, when they're certain that no one's going to see it and that they can get away with it anonymously. People just go right to some animal state. Uh -huh. no, no, no! <laughs> it's also interesting because there's an obvious road to go down if you're going to tell a story about a red room, which is to go into, you know, to, to really make something super gory and go down that torture porn path, which is great. But I also thought it would be really interesting to do something different, you know, uh, just something that subverts the expectations. Yeah, well, that's the trick with the red rooms because there's, there's different ones. There's one legend, which is just a pop up ad. Yeah. Just saying, what is in the red room? What is it? And once you get the pop up ad, it's like the ring, like it takes over your computer then start showing you the victims, and then you become one of the victims in the next pop-up ad that someone gets. Or there is the person paying with Bitcoin to torture another person. Yes. But then it feels like stuff that we have seen before and that kind of both of us have done. So one of the things I loved about it was your approach and the story and throwing in the daughter and these people that are sort of doing it for entertainment and that it's fake mm -hmm. and then it turns real. How did you find a way into this story that was new and fresh and excited you as a director? You know, I researched uh, you know, for, for a long time, and what I discovered was a lot of the Red Rooms that have been encountered proved to be um, scams. The people that were involved were just ripping off the viewers for their Bitcoin. And you can actually go online, you can see, because of the blockchain, you can see how much Bitcoin had been transferred into these Red Room sites. And I just thought, wow, what kind of characters would be involved in creating a, a Red Room like that, and, and who would these people be? And I just thought, like, that's a great, sort of launching off point for something that's character driven. Like who are these people? And then to develop a story about characters that have an actual motivation that we can relate to, to put us into their shoes and to understand why this Red Room exists for them was the inspiration for the episode. Here we go. What do you think, Hockey? Should we cash them in? Yeah, not just In all your research for Red Rooms, did you ever find any evidence there were real ones? You do hear, yeah, but that's what makes it a great urban legend, because yes, you hear on, you can read on you know, Reddit forums, people who have encountered them, first-hand encounters. It's on well, a Reddit forum. That's how I found Hostel. There was a link to a page of, oh, you can pay $10,000 and go into a room and put a bullet in someone's head to know what that feels like. And the discussion was, is that real? There have been cases, like actual proven cases, uh, but not the live stream. The live stream is where it, where it really becomes an urban legend. One thing I love about your directing is that it's very clean and very specific, and you're really meticulous with your shots. 
Do you shot list? Do you plan it out? Show up and wing it? What's your approach to doing a scary movie? I'm obsessed with the idea of fixing it in prep. I don't like fixing it in post. I do my own editing. I, I sometimes do my own visual effects. I'm heavy in post-production. I don't like being in post-production fixing stuff. I like to capture it in camera. I'll come to set hyper-prepared. A shot list by storyboard every single shot, typically. Sometimes I'll pre full sequences. I'll, I'll build animatics. First of all, I wish every director was as prepared as you, myself included. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the kill stuff. How close to it was what you had in your head, and how gory did you want to go with it, or um, not? I wanted to deliver on the promise of this Red Room and, and the promise on the genre. So I definitely wanted to go with gore, but to do it in a way that's just a little bit, you know, in a way that's producible and in a way that we can do on budget and on schedule that's also, you know, cinematic and creative. No, 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 you're fine. No, 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 no. I think the final kill is a good example of, of how I like to do it because all the actual stabbing and killing that happens is off camera. That final kill, there's a, there's a shot where we come across the tools, all the, the tools on the table, and you can just see her grabbing them and you can hear her stabbing them. And you know it's, whatever's happening, you know it's awful and your imagination's building up and then there's a reveal and you can see him at the end with all the items in him. I call it the human pincushion. The trick is people go, oh, Alien and Jaws, don't show the monster. And then people are like, they didn't show anything. And then if you show too much, it becomes silly. So it's really balance. finding this balance of when you know the audience really wants it, not giving it to them, but then giving it to them in a way they didn't expect. Yeah, you know, it's more about the suspense than the gore to some degree. I love the idea of just sustaining it, sustaining yeah. it, sustaining it, and then the reveal. <laughs> Yeah, we found in Hostel the moment of the guy trying to figure out which tool to pick was way scarier than any of the actual cutting itself. So I was like, oh man, I wish I had shot more of the guy like this one. No, what about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where the audience is squirming. Because it's building suspense and you're just waiting for the, for the bang. Thank you, Justin. Where can anyone go to find more of your work or, more, or to follow you or to look at your stuff? You can go to justinhardingfilmmaker.com. I've got all my short films on there. Um, I have a feature film called Making Monsters that you can, that you can rent on a, you know, all platforms. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be checking out your work just in these episodes. Thank you so much for doing it. It's a pleasure. Thank you.